the Lord has spoke to me that this is important. And I understand that the people around you can't make a mate happen. But they certainly can treat your longing with a certain degree of spiritual respect. And that makes all the difference when you have to go through the process. It makes all the difference to have someone come up to you every day of your life saying, I'm praying that you find a mate. So don't give up hope. People are praying for you and, and there's someone amazing that God is preparing for you. That's a lot nicer to hear than, well, since you have nowhere to be on Thanksgiving, you want to join us. Oh my God. You know what I'm saying? Oh my gosh. It's like, no, I'd rather be alone because if I'm alone, well, maybe the phone will ring, <laughs> you know, or maybe Jesus will show up or maybe I'll hurt so bad that I'll just die and I won't have to deal with this or your charity ever again. <laughs> Treat it serious. Treat it as a call from God. Treat it as a ministry and treat it with the respect you would if God told you you're going to start a church or you're going to start a street ministry. I know when he told me I was going to record my first record, I was like, what a responsibility. Oh my gosh. You, you really want to trust that with me? You're nuts. Well, that's nothing compared to another human for the rest of their life. And as someone who has failed miserably at relationships, I would like to say firsthand that I am grateful that God is saying to me as well as everyone else, it ain't over till it's over. And it may not just be our fault. It may really be because of the fall of man. And Satan hates marriage. He hates it. Because he's read the Bible more than us. And the Bible says where two or more are gathered in his name. So a, a partnership where there's prayer in agreement is the most powerful force in the universe against Satan. So when we look at these nice single people that are desperately lonely and have nothing to do and nowhere to go and the best we can do for them, and I'm not saying this is bad, it's very sweet to invite people over on Thanksgiving, but please don't make that face. Please don't go, <laughs> Because we really don't want to have you. <laughs> well, I don't want to go. I hate those things. I just want you to give me some food. Give me some food and send me home. Or give it to me the day before or the day after. But please don't make me sit there with your family. Oh my gosh. Ooh, the only thing worse than my family is yours. We need to start seeing these people as potential halves of a set that's going to kick holy ass on Satan. Because at the very least, if we can get couples praying, we've changed the course of humanity from doing it. And we, the lonely hearts, need to stop beating ourselves up. We need to stop beating ourselves up for our failures that's why I can say I've failed, because I'm not beating myself up about it like I was. Trust me. We need to stop beating ourselves up, but we also need to recognize that this is alive and kicking, and it can't be ignored. <laughs> that there is something brewing in us that has Jesus' purpose behind it. And something is missing in our lives because it's not happening. If I, if I read one more personal ad online that says, uh, I'm really not looking for someone to complete, complete me, but I'm just looking for you know a companion on this journey. I'm like, uh, you know what? 
I'll wait till someone wants me to complete them. <laughs> I, I, I understand two halves making a whole. I know, I know what God did. I know what God does. And I know what happens when two people who love Jesus get together at his leading and his guiding and serve him together. I know what can happen and I know what he does through them. And there's nothing like it on the planet. And we have to nurture the people who long for this. Because what they long for is beautiful. And it's right. And it's from God. And they feel bad enough for what they did to lead them to whatever point they're at. And they feel bad enough that they're single. And they feel inferior enough. And they feel unwanted enough. And they feel abandoned enough. And what they need from the rest of the body of Christ is some encouragement. Some aggressive, find them a date encouragement. You know what? Invite them over on Thanksgiving, but have a blind date there for them. Put an ad online for some. I, you know, I've read those. People putting ads online for, online for people. You know it's really the person putting it up themselves, pretending to be their sister or their mother or something because they're too embarrassed to say they're doing it. So when I put up one saying it was for my mom who's been dead for a decade, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I didn't do it. I, I think I will. You know what? I think I'm just going to admit that I'm, I want to do that and I want to see if, what happens if I write an ad from someone else's perspective describing how amazing I am, but I'm too shy to put up an ad. And then I have to tell someone I meet, oh, by the way, I'm a liar. <laughs> but seriously, we need to reach out, we need to help, and we need to do something other than say, well, we don't want you to be alone on Valentine's Day. <laughs> well, guess what? I am. I am. You can put me in the most crowded place in the world, but I am alone on Valentine's Day. The good news is my favorite candy comes out for Valentine's Day, even though it's available year-round. It only tastes right on Valentine's Day. So at least I get my favorite candy on Valentine's Day. However, we can't fix that in another person, can we? We cannot say, well, you have us. My gosh. Um, I love everybody, but it's not the same. <laughs> Let me explain sex again. But <laughs> that having been said... <laughs> We need to treat the single, lonely people that don't want to stay that way as people that are being called to as essential, if not more essential, ministry than our pastors. We need to encourage them. We need to support them. We need to pray for them. We need to do whatever we can do to help them meet someone help them in their path for goodness sakes and then we need to be there when the real work starts and encourage and support and pray for a couple that they become a prayerful force in Christ against darkness that will lead to whatever ministry God's called them to but also they'll at least be praying for us and they'll be praying for their church and they'll be praying for our leaders and our world and Haiti. And maybe if enough couples had gotten together and prayed, there wouldn't have been a redo of We Are the World. I'm convinced. I'm convinced. We never would have had to hear that song ever again if more people prayed. This is why we have to. We have to reach out. We have to support. And to all the single ladies... All the single people, God is saying, again, it's normal, it's healthy, it's right, it's created in God, in you, to have these feelings, these needs, these longings, these desires. It is time to embrace this as the beginning of God talking to you about your ministry with a life partner. 
and start.